welcome to episode six of interviews with everyday people on the HCG diet. I have Donna with me today and you know instead of telling you or introducing her right away I'm actually going to just show you a quick clip side by side of her when she started her HCG journey at 270 pounds and then a clip of her you know more recently after losing 127 pounds. So I'll show that to you now. Donna has actually been vlogging her whole HCG journey from the very start. So if you want to go back, watch her journey, see how she learned how she did, you can actually subscribe to her YouTube channel, which is Giving It My All 2011. And um, she even she even said, you know, if you're serious about doing this, um, that you can private message her through her channel on YouTube, and you might even be able to Skype with her. You know, if you if you want to talk seriously about that. You know, recognize that we all have our own private lives, of course. She mm -hmm. has MS. There's days she doesn't feel well, but, you know, if there's something serious that you need to talk about, um, she's open to that. Okay, so thank you so much for being with me today, Donna. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, you had an anniversary. I wanted to ask you about that. What anniversary did you just have? I had my one year on May 8th of my completion, my LIW for my round six. Wow. So, so you've been maintaining. Yeah, I've been maintaining. I was 145 that morning. Yeah. Um, and I, my LIW was 143. Wow. Uh, so it, it felt good to hit a year that I felt completely confident that I, I've got this. That's awesome. You know, and it's locked in. Yeah. So, so she's lost, you've lost 127 pounds and now you've been maintaining that weight loss for a full year. Yep. 100%. That is amazing. You know, I go through spells where things are up or down depending upon with my autoimmune, whether I'm doing steroids and all. And I had actually gone up at one point to 150 yeah. uh, during a course of steroids, but I didn't freak out. It just, yeah. you know, it naturally worked its way out within two weeks. You know, I didn't go back down exactly to 143, but I will. Yeah. It will it, it will balance out. Well, it just yeah. sounds like you've learned to like work with your body and know what to do. Tell us actually a little bit about that for, for anyone who doesn't know what kind of health conditions that you've dealt with prior for, for many years now. Oh yeah. Well, since ninety eight, so it's up fifteen years, I've had you know, I was diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis. Okay. So, which is an autoimmune disease that attacks the myelin in your brain and kind of like an electrical cord when it loses its uh, outer protection, the wires get crossed sometimes. So, yeah. uh, and that affects all parts of your body, your brain, your speaking, yeah. your walking, your balance, your, your every, everything, uh, gotcha. the way everything clicks. Gotcha. Your body's just full of all those nerves that just go everywhere from your brain. Yeah. So that uh, six years ago, I had a mild heart attack, and you know, so I have coronary artery disease. Um, I've had stents. I've had two heart surgeries for stents. Um, I've had high blood pressure since maybe eight years now on medication, controlled on medication. Very, very long family history of that. Um, I don't think that even the weight, of course it didn't help it, but um, putting extra stress on the heart and everything and, and your blood pressure, um, you know, sometimes genetically you get stuck right. with that one. Right. So you and said heart. before you started, you were on like 17 pills a day. You had actually mentioned that 17, recently. Yeah, I showed you my pill case in that yeah. one vlog there, you know, I mean, yeah. 17 pills a day. And that was just regular medications to help me function with my spasticity in my legs. And um, that wasn't even adding in supplemental pain or that was just to function. Yeah on any level and and now I'm seven you know yeah so that's, that's less big. than half yeah yeah it is you know give or take right. if I need something of course additionally but so um so you had all these crazy health things going on um, and then you were you know like you said about 100 pounds overweight uh, what made you choose to to try HCG you know I, I, I don't even know I was just 
desperate. Okay, so I'm I'm looking for anything, you know, the magic stuff you sprinkle on your food, anything, anything, you know. Yeah. And uh, I was desperate, really desperate. Before my heart situation, I even went to my doctor, my primary care physician, and I said, I've been looking at HCG. What do you think? Oh, no, 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 no. You just don't know how it's going to enter. He just has known me for 15 years and loves me to death and didn't know how any of that could possibly interact with my MS medications. It just could, it could be bad hormonally. Yeah. And um, he says, big veto. Learn to be happy. It's very hard to learn to be happy when at that point I would crawl around my house some days. Wow. Literally. Because of crawl. pain? Because of the, not necessarily the weight, but the way my MS had so, uh, I was having relapses left and right with that. Gotcha. Um, and the, the weight did not help. It was very hard to lift. 270 pounds into the bathtub yeah. and lift it out. So I couldn't just step in and step out. Yeah. It was throw one leg over and pull yourself out or get my husband to help me. Yeah. He was helping me get dressed. He mm -hmm. was helping me, you know, he still helps me from time to time because I have, I don't feel my hands. So sure. But Hopefully you know that you've done what ready. you can now. Probably that's a good feeling, huh? Like, you know, that you've done all you can to like help the situation. So whatever yeah, help you need on top of that, you know, that's okay. That's huge. And my neurologist, you know, anyways, I went against my doctor's wishes. And I just, I had been reading and watching blogs. I went through a marathon of Miss Cotton Candy Kisses and Mama Clock. I yeah. mean, just one after another. My husband was watching me. He's like, you have been watching YouTube for like five hours. <laughs> and I can't stop. I'm going to their next one, next one, next one, next one. And researching and researching, and I was like, I can't do this. And I started t reaching out to all these people that were, you know, currently involved in it. Yeah. Uh, how do I get this? Please help me. Please help me. Can you help me? And, you know, some of them wrote back saying, oh, you've got this, you've got that. But it was still, we're talking about 2010, um, you know, there weren't that many people that had really had a big track record that you could follow. Right. Um, you know, Jenny, you know, Blonde Ambition, and all them. so, you know, I was kind of around with the end of their stuff. So um, I just had had it. I got out of the hospital that morning and I loaded. Wow. I had already ordered everything knowing I was going to do it. And then I had the heart thing and I was like, oh, you know, what's this going to do? And I so just you were, Yeah. So you were ready to just, you were ready to take a chance because of how bad everything was. It was so worth the chance. Yeah. And now uh, it's about 38 pounds. It took about 38 pounds for my doctor to say, wow, you're losing weight. Mm. I was like, 38 pounds, you think so? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. But it really, it was really hard to tell when you're 270, you know, yeah. people don't really notice until you're 40 pounds. Yeah. I hadn't even changed the size at that point. Gotcha. So you know, things were a little more stretchy and you didn't yeah. wear form fitted things yeah. or, you know, waistbands had some room, <laughs> um, in those kind of clothes. And, uh, he says, uh, what are you doing? And I told him and he says, I can't argue with it. I went for my six month follow up from my cardio thing and to my cardiologist. And he says, yeah. whatever you're doing, I can't argue with it either. Wow. Interesting. And my neurologist said, you go for it, girl. And yeah. he says, it's not going to help. He told me for years and years, you got to get the weight off. But it was impossible. I, my metabolism, my hormonal, everything was dead. It didn't function. You did something different, and you did less breaks with HCG. You did shorter breaks. You kind of compacted your whole HCG journey. Um, tell me, you know, why you chose to do that and how that worked out for you. Uh, I think it worked out fine, you know, in the end now, obviously. Yeah. Um, I was so eager and my head was so in it. Um, not always, not every day, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, there's, but in general. Struggles. I went, actually went back and looked at some of my old blogs to see in my calendar to see how long. I mean, I even did 50 some days and 52 days and 56 days. So my first three rounds, I cycled three week breaks of P3 in between and then hop right back on. There was no, you know, it was going through learning. Um, 
I didn't want to reestablish just that point. I didn't want my body to remember that. And my momentum was good. And, you know, I was motivated and I was losing. I had, think I had lost 38 pounds in my first 40 days, Wow. something like that. Wow. And it's like, I just wanted to be under 200, you know, I just wanted to be in wonderland, so to speak, you know, yeah. and uh, it had been so long since I'd seen that. Yeah. Probably 10 years at that point, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was just ready, so I didn't see wasting time. Yeah, you know, and I think to do this, um, you kind of, because we talked about this, you have to kind of be in a place where you've already addressed um, deeper issues, especially right. when it comes to food. So wh how do you, how are you already in that place? Well, you know, and a lot of that discussion hadn't really opened up about the emotional eating things yeah. when I was doing it, you know, and yeah. until Robin's book did a lot of that really. Yeah blow up there but yeah. um I I was and when it did happen for me in like round four I was I realized when I read her book I was already there I was it, it clicked instantly for me uh when I, I've had cancer and most people know that too I've had cancer five times oh, since right. yeah, I was 30 so it's a recurrent 100 recurrent type of cancer so um you know, I just always pray that it doesn't come back anytime soon because mm -hmm. I really rather not deal with it right now. Mm -hmm. But um, where was I going with that? Oh, just how you had addressed those issues. Yeah. Dur when I, you can leave that part in. <laughs> when, when I um, had my first surgery for my first cancer, um, it was a very mutilating situation for me as a woman. I had been through, you know, two years of counseling, you know, about how to my body image and how, how, how to love myself. Because yeah. at that point, like I said, I hadn't met my husband and I was a single mother of two children feeling as though I had nothing that I was ever going to be able to share with a soulmate. Yeah. So, uh, big depression and all that kind of thing. So I dealt with that. A, a lot and I think that overcoming a lot of that not that I had perfected at that point because sure. I was I was 30 you know yeah you're young too but I mean I was young and out on my own and um, not ready to face all of that kind of thing and uh, I think because I addressed a lot of that is why it clicked gotcha. you know it wasn't attached to a food issue it was more attached to me which is yeah. what I think people need to make sure that yeah. they tap into yeah. and uh, so I get it when everybody's struggling with binging and the emotional and the self-esteem and the body image thing I, I mean I totally get it I think a lot of people misunderstand that they're think that I went through it easily yeah that it was just easy mm -hmm. but it's it wasn't easy then yeah. which uh, made it easier now you yeah. know going through it yeah, so that's definitely an important part because I, I, I do think, yeah, the protocol is not easy. So whether you, you, you just, you have to address those things, whether it's earlier or as you're doing the protocol, otherwise you're probably not going to be successful long term, you know, so. Oh, yeah, I, I'm always so inspired and not, you know, there's, you can do this at any age, you can do this at any age. But when yeah. I see, you know, the younger people that are conquering, I, I'm so thankful because, um, I, it's harder. I guess to learn struggles are good I, for something. <laughs> they, they do teach you a lot, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I've learned how to bounce back from a lot of things. And I think that that helps, um, you know, yeah. uh, along the whole journey. Oh, so tell me about what kind of weight loss you experienced as far as were there times you didn't lose anything? Were there times that you lost just a little bit? You know, yeah. what, how did yeah. it go for you? I remember many, many, many struggles. And even going back and looking through some of my blogs, I could see I had a nine day stall. I had a 14 day stall. Gotcha. Um, and that was back in the time when I was, I get on that scale every day and I was waiting for the 0.2 or the zeros or the 0.2 gains or the this, that, and the other, and analyzing everything. Um, okay, so we already talked about that you had the slow losses and stuff. Um, so yeah, did you I had my gains too? I mean, I had the mystery two pounds up. You yeah, know, and I can remember. 
Oh, I saw that on your clip because you had pickles. So salty. I had a pickle. I had pi a pickle. You know, I you know the little pa bags you get of pickles, the mm -hmm. big fat pickles. Yeah. This was way before my label reading uh, days. I didn't know there's five servings in a, in that pickle. <laughs> it's one pickle. Yeah. How funny. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> know that either. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> and uh, you know. Just, I learned. did, I did, unlike some, in my first round, I think, okay, strawberries must not be good for me. Tomatoes are not good for me. And analyzing each round is different. One thing might not be good for me on each round, but I ceased worrying about that mm -hmm. at my third round. I ate whatever was there. I didn't have an allerg allergy to it. I didn't, so what if I didn't? You know, I kept yeah. those foods in my plan mm -hmm. purposefully to um, not have a problem. I wanted my body to learn to work with them. Yeah. Because they were foods that I regularly eat. So gotcha. I left in. So, and then yeah. I stopped weighing every yeah. day. I went to weighing once a week. Gotcha. I didn't need to, at that point, I was so confident it just works. Yeah. Like, and you knew that whatever happened, that's how it was going to happen. And, and you were right. able to still stick to the protocol, though, even though you weren't, weren't weighing, right? For me, even better because that's good. I didn't have, the at, at that point, like round three, the head game gotcha. of, of the gain or loss of the point twos or the goose eggs. And I didn't see the stall or feel it as, as much. I'm sure it still happened. Yeah. That's good. That's good. There was a time that I was, uh, Bobby, SoCal Plum used to harass me all the time. She was like, you scale whore. Get on. I would get on in the morning. I would get on in the afternoon. I would get on in the evening. You were one of those yeah. multiple times a day wears? Oh, I was like a four time a day wear. Shame so, on you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because, and it was more I tell like people that a lot. People email me. They're like, oh, I gained three pounds. And this morning I was 150, yeah. and tonight I'm 153. I'm like, no, you're always going to weigh more at night. I mean, if you drink a, one glass of water, you weigh a pound more. <laughs> I, was telling, I was telling Bobby one day, I was like, if I weigh, and I did it to gauge what my day tomorrow was going to be, because I knew that if I was only three pounds up from the morning mm -hmm. when I went to bed, that I was going to have a loss the next morning. Oh, interesting. Wow. <laughs> yeah. If I was five pounds, I, I would even still have be less the next morning. Yeah. Um, I can retain and with my medications on certain parts, when I was taking more medications that could, yeah. I, I had, that's why I had to let go of the scale because it was so, yeah, it could be so many things with me. Yeah. I knew that the foods worked. Gotcha. So. So that's good to know, you know, because for, for everybody watching, I, I have, you know, everyone is different. Um, so you have to do what's going to work for you personally. Um, it's like for me, the, the scale, I just weigh the one time in the morning. I never weigh any other time. It's just, it's just a feedback. But if you, if you're a person that you find that you kind of keep edging towards the scale multiple times a day, maybe it is ending up to be something not good for you, yeah. you know? Yeah. When I was going through the tough times in my first couple of rounds, you know, I wish I had known about that, um, I would have laid off of it. Yeah. It still was hard. When I gave it up, it was hard. I wasn't yeah. completely ready to just say, I'm not doing this. Yeah. But after a period of time of it being so comfortable. And then by the fourth, fifth, sixth round, I didn't need the scale to, um, I, if I did get on, it was for giggles. Yeah. Just to see. Yeah. And you know, then through P3s and P4s, because my last rounds, I did P3s, P4s. Yeah. Um, Still never went to more than really a six week break. You know, and I think that that's a, a good point to just mention that there is room for variation in how you do the protocol. I think basically the one most important thing is just that you that you do it properly, I mean within the right framework. Um, because some people, t I mean I've always taken really long breaks, other people like you taking shorter breaks. You've maintained your weight loss for a whole year now, obviously it didn't harm you, you know, you were able to do that. So, but the point is, is that you weren't cheating a ton or binging or, or using it, you know, like, oh, I can't wait to load again. Sometimes I see people do that, like use doing it frequently as a, as a way to, to, to binge on the loading days. And so I think it's just being responsible about how you do it, however that is, you know, and, and you've done that. So I think that's, you know, that's a good example. You know, I want to ask you what you do now, you know, it's been a whole year, 
what do you do? What do you eat? I mean, what do you, how do you maintain your losses? How do you keep things in balance? My mindset is obviously in a healthful mindset now yeah. naturally it comes it, it comes naturally purely by me learning so much about nutrition and better alternatives and i have learned to make so many things that i just love um and i realize things that don't make me feel good i think when you're so full of uh, a lot of the sugars and the yeah carbs and things that really affect you you don't realize how they physically make you feel um, if I have, I had a little teeny piece of cake. I mean, it was like a one inch by one inch square yet last night at my daughter's banquet. Yeah. And I could instantly feel it going through my veins of, oh, wow. ugh. Yuckiness. <laughs> yuckiness all over. But I mean, I could instantly feel it. Yeah. Not that I avoid all of that all the time, but yeah. it is always a constant little reminder. You know, I, I'm, I'm very mindful of what makes me feel good. That's so, good. I mean, there, there are key things that I think that once you start to turn to the health versus the number versus the size, um, you can make a world of change. I mean, yeah. you know, I stay away from white sugar okay. and um, white flour. So you're you're pretty much like white sugar free, you're flour free. Are you actually like gluten free or just just flour? So not just gluten flour. free. Okay, so, so you I still can pasta. have gluten. Okay, so you still have pasta. So you so you're not necessarily low carb. You're just Um I am cuz I want people to know like can they eat carbs in P4 oh, and yeah. I mean weight, oh, yeah. you know? I, well, people you, ask me that. Talk, we talked earlier for for me I know the carbs breed carbs and stimulate yeah. things that make you hungry and yeah. You know, I eat within hunger. I do do that at all times, and it's easy. It's not that I'm cool. sitting there um, analyzing my bite, wondering what it's a natural thing that happens in my brain, and I know I'm full. Yeah. So um, you have to spend some time working on that kind of thing. So yeah. some days I might eat 600 calories. Some days I might eat 2,000. Yeah. It really depends upon the day. I don't, I don't avoid anything that I like. So gotcha. I bake with almond flour, coconut flour. Um, I eat anything I want. Yeah. Just keep there's it nothing, hungry. there's nothing barred. Now I, I make my crackers and I like them better than the ones I buy and I can make them anytime. You don't even have to go That's to the great. store because I've got the ingredients, yeah. you know, yeah. we, don't, we don't eat anything out of a bag or a container. You That's know what wonderful. I mean? It, it's, I'm always start with this amount. This is a natural, and you might find you don't even want all of that. Yeah. Um, this is a natural amount that you should be satisfied yeah. with. But if you're still hungry for more, I don't. I you yeah. know, go back for more. Yeah. You can always go back for more, and right. that was something I never had mastered. If it's on my plate. I need to. I grew up with clean your plate. You're not leaving this dinner table till you clean your plate. Yeah. And they didn't. I didn't fix my portion. They fixed my portion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's the world I grew up with. I yeah. think a lot of us did. Yeah, uh, right. You know, you eat what's on your plate and you don't waste. And, you know, I'm the first one. If my family says, I'm full. I love it when my son says, I'm full mm -hmm. because it's the natural. I'm full and I, I'm like, throw it away or yeah. stick it in a baggie and put it in the fridge. You might want it later on tonight. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's good. So, that's cool. So it's like your family is starting to be able to learn the same healthy habits, you know, from a younger age. Well, that was that was something very important. When I looked at my three children when I started this, that was why my heart was breaking. I mm. wanted to be here. I wanted to see them get married. I wanted to see have, I wanted to have grandchildren. I want to be a part of all of that. So yeah. I wanted to say something about um, what you said about your family giving you that space to go through that process, uh, because I you know, in trying to help people be successful, I feel like that is an important element where you just, you have to realize to do this and to lose a big chunk of weight and keep it off and, and go through that process, you are going to have to have more time focused on, on yourself to do that. And, but, but that it's temporary. It's not like you're going to disappear from helping your family or be less involved with your kids forever. Right. It's just, right. It's this chunk of time that if you do this now, mm -hmm. 
then the next 20 years, <laughs> you're going to be able to be what you want for them. But in order to do that, it's like you have got to take this time out for yourself. You do. So and that's it, good you uh, do that. There was often times that I felt very selfish, you know, about it. But it's okay to be selfish. Um, there's so much that I do. I'm very involved with my kids and yeah. what they do and very, very involved. Yeah. Uh, the whole point was I wanted to be around to be right. involved. Yeah, and you have to and, look at that big picture, you know. Yeah. You do, you do, and um, there's nothing wrong with it. Is there is there anything else that, that you want to tell people or that you feel it's important for people to know to do this? Um, there's a lot of uh, non-scale victories through this process. Um, and give yourself grace when you... Uh, mess up i have to commend so many people there's people that started when i started yeah. and they're still around and they're still not near the end they're still struggling and i am so proud and inspired to see that they keep trying because it's just like anything else you know quitting smoking quitting just quitting anything you know yeah. i mean changing anything lifelong takes time and it's a different process it's not a race, yeah. you know, take it in your own time. And uh, I try to be supportive to everyone. Uh, give, give the love that you receive, or whether you receive it or not, you know, to support yeah. people. That's good. Yeah. And it's, it's so true it's, that, you know, like when we start this, we're all in different places mentally and emotionally. You had already been through so much. Right. You know, Don't you compare. were able to kind of, go through it like yeah. a train, you know, but then some of us are just starting to deal with those things as we, but it's just good to keep trying. Like you said, don't give up, you know? Oh yeah. And you know, believe me, it wasn't easy. You know, I do have people that say you did, it was so easy for you and, you know, discount the whole work. It was a lot right. of hard it work. Was, yeah. On it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of hard work. It's just some things I didn't have to touch on, but I'm always happy and inspired when I see people doing them. Actually, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll sit and, I can watch a vlog with my headphones on and my husband sees me smiling or I'll even clap because Aww. I see big aha moments for people that so um, I'm like, yes, you're one step further, yeah. you know, and I feel like a cheerleader. I mean, I'm just kind of around in the background nowadays. I don't, uh, I feel kind of awkward vlogging because it's like, <laughs> you know, most people are in tune with, um, the people on around and that's who they want to relate to. Sure. It's not always often somebody says, I don't really care what everybody else is doing. Please tell me what you did. And, yeah. and you know, that when that happens, it's why I still stay, stay around. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. You know, it's nice to learn from people who are, who have, have kind of finished and, and have maintained it because those are the people you want to get advice from, you know? Yeah. And you know, I mean, having over a hundred, whether if you have over a hundred, I don't know if you're, I'm four, I'll be 47 next week. So, um, and with my physical challenges day to day, I couldn't count exercise as part of my routine for fitness. And I didn't want it as an equation of maintaining my weight. Gotcha. It's a bonus. I do love to exercise yeah. because it, it's so empowering to me to be able to bend because in the beginning I couldn't put my seatbelt on well by myself. Wow. Um, you know, so uh, swimming and I love doing that, but there's days I can't. So yeah. um, I'm looking forward to now that it's swimming season here, getting back in the pool because I think that'll tone up some of the stuff because when you have such the amount of weight that over a hundred pounds and you're upper age, you're younger, your skin bounces back so much better. There's areas on me. I, I wish were different, but I've embraced them and I love them. And, you know, I know some people are fearful. I was very fearful. I remember a conversation I had with a girlfriend. What if I lose the weight and I have all this excess skin yeah. and I'm just as disappointed looking in the mirror. So that was one of the reasons why I stopped when I did, because I'd actually gone down seven more pounds. Mm. And to me, I didn't look healthful. Mm. Interesting. Um, I, you know, I still had a good BMI yeah. at the five pounds higher yeah. and my skin just was fuller. Yeah, I have abnormal fat. I didn't feel the need to take it all the way down. Yeah. Um, I, cause I felt better. I was going to say, um, 
I, I think that's true that you need to try to start seeing yourself in a different way sometimes because um, even actually this is not exactly the same as you but it's a little bit similar um you know since I do like to work out with weights and stuff um, I I gain like several pounds of muscle and as a result um, parts of me are actually bigger than they would be if I was had less muscle and for instance some of my shirts um, when I was starting or, or, or halfway through maybe that got you know way too big got way too big but then when I started working out again I, I didn't gain any fat whatsoever but I gained so much muscle um, right. that some of the shirts actually started fitting again and I was like oh, I don't know how I feel about this you know and I had to kind of process the feeling because I love what yeah. I can do with my muscle but it does mean that you know certain parts of me are kind of bigger they're not all thin and um, but you know what I'm doing what I love and and it, and it feels good and I'm strong right. so I know that it's healthy but you do have right. to like process that mentally you, re you really you really do which is another reason why this the scale is um <clears throat> It's valuable tool for a lot of people, yeah. but I can't let that dictate. I mean, my I, I think feeling good, you know, when I dipped to 139 and I saw that 139, I was like, oh, I never even thought the 130s were possible for me. Yeah, you know, um, I didn't. I, there was a moment that I thought, oh, I've got to get to 130. Yeah, if I can hit one, you know, it was a fleeting moment because. <laughs> It wasn't what we really mattered, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, body fat, BMI, it's all good. I'm in a normal range, and that's good for me. Yeah. So, um, for me, looking in the mirror, I look better in clothes, maybe less, but I still got to pass myself in the mirror getting in the shower. And yeah. when you see things, my skin got really crinkly. Yeah. Crinkly, crepey. Yeah. And short of um, when you have an excess and you're, it doesn't bounce back well, some people are blessed. Right. The skin is just, I mean, that's just a blessing. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I do think there's blessed. a genetic component to that. There, 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 you know? there has to be because, yeah. you know, somebody said, why don't you just lift weights with your arms? Because, you know, I've got my bat wings. And I'm like, I would be Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> to, to fill it out. <laughs> to fill those arms. And then how would that look? You know, I'm already, I'm already very broad shouldered and, and yeah. breasty. So, yeah. um, I lost a lot of that, but not all of it. So I always look bigger anyways, up top but, yeah. uh, to go from a 20 to a, an eight is, is perfectly fine. And yeah. eights are like my universal, but it's sometimes it's a seven, sometimes it's a nine, depending upon the cut to things. Sure. I have sixes. Yeah. Um, and they all, it, that's just the numbers. And you know, you, you can get stuck on that mind game. Yeah. This isn't a six. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't a six. You yeah. know, I just remember in the beginning, I just wanted to be a hundred pounds less. I yeah. wanted to weigh what I weighed when I married my husband, which was 170. Mm -hmm. I would be a hundred pound mark. Yeah. And I remember putting on my dress I wore to my wedding reception. Um, when I hit 170, I put it on and it was way too big. The loss that you lose is different. It mm -hmm. just is shape. It's, it's the abnormal fat. It's that more fat. Like, yeah. It's, like, it's more fat, less muscle, you know? Yeah. 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 And everything looked good to me at 170. Actually, that was the number I wanted to get to because that was the last time I remember being confident and happy with my body. Mm. But I was also very muscular. I mean, I, I was in law enforcement eons ago. Yeah. And I remember, I, I think, um, such a low body fat. It was amazing. Oh, wow. I was very cut, huh. young woman. Oh, wow. I was on the SWAT team. Oh, wow. I was, 20, I was 25 and on the SWAT team. <gasps> so I was fit. Don't and, mess with Donna. <laughs> oh, I know. My husband used to joke. He's like, she'll take you down. So... <laughs> Oh, funny. So it's uh, it it was something to adapt to all together with the MS. Yeah. So yeah, you well, got to take great. what you're left with and love it. And I say love yourself through the whole process. I agree. Even even at 270 yeah. pounds, I should have loved my body because it was obviously doing miraculous things. Yeah. To sustain me. Yeah. But I don't need that weight anymore yeah but it is like you said it's helpful though to to be happy through the whole thing like when I lost my first chunk I was still overweight after round one but it, it was a new me to me so I was happy yeah. um yeah I hadn't seen myself that much 
less in a long time. So I look good to me. And I, I know I know not everyone sees it that way as easily, but I definitely think we should strive for that because it will help us to to, to go 100%. the whole way. You know? Yeah, that's, a, that's something you evolve through because I remember taking my before and after pictures of my round one and two, and I'd lost 38 pounds and yeah. I couldn't see a thing. I remember mm. bursting into tears. Oh. I remember putting it, and then Bobby says, send it to me. Send me the picture. I didn't want to show it to anybody. Yeah. I sent it to her, and she says, are you kidding me? You can totally see. And then I put it on Facebook. And if I hadn't had that group of people point out to me that I had accomplished something, I felt so unaccomplished. Oh, Although wow. I felt very accomplished when I took the snapshot. Yeah, but then you looked you at know? them. And... and then I put them side by side, and I was like, I've done nothing. Mm. And I can remember vlogging saying, I've only lost 15 pounds. And I was like on day 12. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, ridiculous things now that I can go back and look. You yeah. Know? Even doing my side by sides uh, the other day, because I took those pictures yesterday. Yeah. I was like, huh. For a minute, I was like, I don't look. I, the camera does add 10 pounds to you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. We're because so hard on ourselves. You no, know, we are, but you know, it, it is, it is a bit true sometimes. Oh, because, it is. Uh, yeah. It is because I have girlfriends that think that I weigh and they're not being too nice. Think that I weigh like 130. Yeah. Um, and I know having the excess skin, if I didn't have the excess skin, I would be down a size easily. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And you know, camera, cameras do change things too. I, I have two different lenses on my camera. One, I look slightly larger than real life, and the other one, I look a lot, like, almost distorted, like, thinner, but I have a big nose. Um, I actually want to do a comparison one day, like, showing people how you look with different lenses, because I have always judged myself based on photos, too, and I didn't realize until I started getting more into photography that you really, it, it, it changes what you look like, even depending on the lens. You cannot go off of that, you know? Tremendously, so, tremendously. I mean, I have people in my real world that, um, real world, you guys are in my real world, but, um, <laughs> we know you, mean. you know, that I see down the, the street, that one of them saw, somebody stumbled upon, the girl I was telling you about earlier, stumbled upon my vlogs, and she saw my recent one, she's like, you look a lot different, I don't mean anything bad, but you look a lot bigger on YouTube than you do in real life. And I said, I thought so too. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> right. Actually, That's you're good. you're totally right because I had the same thing happen to me just a couple weeks ago. I ran into a fellow HCGer, um, and both of us said, "Wow, you you're a lot smaller than I thought you were." Both of us said that. We were both thinking it. I was going to tell you, and I'll probably have to stand up. Um, I came across. I've given away all of my heavier clothes. I have nothing to turn back to. Okay. No tens. There's no any of that in my wardrobe. And you said you started at a size 20? 20. Okay. Okay. I didn't keep anything. Um, but the shirt that I wore in my day one picture. Okay. And the pants. Oh. So they're 20. I see that. Okay. And they got the Gibby thing. Wow. This this was my day one pant. So this is my day one pant. Yeah, I want to see that. Wow. <laughs> That's so okay. amazing. You see, guys? <laughs> yeah. So day those one. are 20s, and then now you're wearing between a 7 and a 9. Yeah, well, actually, these are small yoga pants. You did six rounds. You lost a lot of weight. Did you have to do a lot of correction days through the process? No, I actually, I remember, you know, I was learning. Yeah. So I remember my first round, um, I thought I was stalling, you know, it was, had been three days and I was at the same weight. Uh, what can I do? Asking everybody, how do I do an apple day? How do I do an apple day? Right. Yeah. yeah. So I did an apple day, whatever. Yeah. I lost weight. I bounced up a pound the next day and Within three days, I was at the same one and same weight anyway. So I learned, okay, I'm not even going to bother. That's, that was a mental, which is what it's meant to be, is mm -hmm. for mental help right. over a hump, which a hump is not three days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it 
go 14 and then feel the hump. But yeah. um, I did one steak day when I felt that, and I, I was on a, I was on P2 and I did one steak day because I just didn't feel like I was losing enough fast enough. Right. Yeah. So I did one steak day and after that, nothing. When fat fast were really going around, I did one fat fast day. Yeah. And I lost like 3.2 or 2, 2.8 or something. And then I gained it half of that back. And then it was the same thing for me. Those things don't work. Yeah. Even modified protein days on yeah. P3, I do nothing with them. But I think that's because I just, my body knows how to deal with all of its things. Yeah. And was one of the reasons why I didn't do a lot of corrections is because I wanted my new body in each round, my new body yeah. to learn how to work through things. Yeah. And I felt like correction days were just for me, manipulations that didn't end, end up being anything that, you know, for some people it, it does work. And yeah. that two pound window, I believe you should correct mm -hmm. something. I would correct my behavior. Most of the time is yeah. all that needed to be corrected. Yeah. So, Get but for you deep. though, you just found that those things, those didn't provide lasting results. So you're just trying to learn to work with, with your body. And, and really it's good if you can do that, you know, you don't want to have to rely yeah. too heavily on those types of things. I did try something. I think the times that I did try something like that, I was jumping the gun on something anyways, yeah. Yeah. or being overly, I was 1.8 above yeah. LIW and yeah. got to do something. Yeah. So, so you, you know, learn to was, relax and not worry oh, too yeah. much. <laughs> Go with the flow. And, you know, it's something I should have perfected by now with <laughs> my everyday life of with the MS, you know, go with the flow. Yeah. I don't deal with that. As, as, you know, pe some people think I do it perfectly. Mm, you're just not seeing me on my bad day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do try to get over things quickly because yeah. there's no reason to linger on. And no beating yourself up. Just move on. So, did you have to do a lot of correction days or things like that? And if you know, if so, or if not, why? Why not? That was. Let me start that over. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, let me see here. I say that's awesome way too much. I hope I can cut that out. <laughs> I like it. Oh, I hate it. I watch myself. I'm like, oh, stop saying that. <laughs> it's my fallback word, I guess. <laughs> oh, uh, what did I eat wrong is, is 